Hello everybody and welcome to today's video. We're gonna be talking about the top five features coming to DOTS 1.0 that I'm excited for, or at least just really interested in and eager to get my hands on. So DOTS 1.0 is the long awaited and much anticipated full production ready release of Unity's data oriented technology stack. Now this isn't basically an end. It doesn't mean that it's no longer going to be in development and no new features are gonna be coming to it past then. But this is basically just a starting point saying, hey, you know, we have a production ready tool set that you can use and it also comes along with some other things such as you know good documentation and sample projects and the like. Now as of right now DOTS 1.0 is slated for release during the 2022 LTS cycle so I would estimate that sometime early to mid 2023. And Unity has also stated that they do intend on doing a public beta test of these new features so it is very possible that we can actually get hands on with some of these features by the end of the year. And if you do have any doubts that Unity is actually going to hit some of these release dates, you know, especially with a lot of the things going on at their company right now, I feel like from my perspective, the DOTS teams have been on just a really good positive stride with all the things that they've been doing. But if you do want a little bit more information about my thoughts on all that, I would definitely go recommend checking out the previous video that I put out where I just kind of talked about my thoughts on the whole situations and what I think about DOTS moving forward. And then just real quickly before we get into my top five features that I'm most excited for in DOTS 1.0, I do just want to mention that my friend Andrew of Infinity PBR is putting on a humble bundle right now. It's one of those pay what you want type bundles with those different tiers depending on how much money that you're willing to spend on the bundle. And there's a lot of really cool things in there. You know, he does a lot of really good fantasy type assets. He has a, a whole mix of high fidelity and low poly assets available in the bundle. And even at the highest tier, you can actually get one of Jason Wyman's courses. And I think this bundle does a really good job about giving you a good variety of assets at whichever level that you choose to purchase it at. So anyways, I'll leave a link to that down in the description below if you do want to check it out and tell them Turbo sent you. Okay, so now let's get into the top five features that I'm most excited for, or at least just kind of interested in. Uh, these are in no particular order, but I do just want to bring them up because they are ones that I'm genuinely excited for or interested in. So number one is going to be the iSystem interface. So the iSystem interface is kind of like an alternative to system base. So instead of, you know, when you define a system base where it's a public partial class, we actually can make a public partial struct. Now the advantage of this is we can actually burst compile the things in an iSystem where we can't with the regular system base. Now you may be thinking, wait, no, we can't already do that. Well, actually what you can do is you can burst, you know, jobs that we're scheduling from inside of a system base, um, but not actually the code running in the actual system base itself. And there are plenty of situations where this might be useful for if we're, you know, doing some work that is not going to be inside of like an entities.foreach function or something like that. And I should mention that this feature is actually not going to be brand new for DOTS 1.0. It is something that is available right now. If you're using entities 0.50 and above, you can use it and try it out and things like that. However, I've kind of stayed away from it myself because I've heard that it is pretty experimental and there are kind of some bugs and quirks to work through. Um, so this is something that I you know, am looking forward to using a little bit more, especially if there are some you know, particular use cases where I really want to have you know, some bursted code that's not running inside of a job. So the next one that I'm excited for is gonna be the new for each workflow. Now, I've really become accustomed to the entities.foreach workflow. I use it quite a bit for you know, most of the jobs that I'm scheduling, and it seems to work out pretty well for me. It definitely can get you know, pretty long in the tooth when you're having you know, all different kinds of options in there, and you need to you know, dispose of things properly, and especially if you need like read and write access to a bunch of different components definitely can get a little bit on the messier side. So this is one that I'm you know, really interested in to seeing how it works again as this new for each workflow. Now we did get a little bit of a glimpse of this in Damien's talk where he put on um, at GDC where he talked about some of the new editor and authoring workflows. We'll be talking about those a little bit later. But um, he did kind of showcase a slide in there that had a little preview of what the new for each workflow would look like. Now it's pretty interesting because it looks you know, a lot similar to just a regular C sharp for each function. So I think something like that could kind of lower the barrier of entry for newcomers to ECS so they don't have to learn the whole new entities for each workflow. Now this is one that I'm definitely more interested in than excited for. I'm definitely interested in because you know the the setup is much different than an entities.foreach. 
and an entity stop for each it is kind of nice because we you know kind of define the query inside that for each function there and you know we say which data components we want and then we basically can put a name for a variable you know right after that data type and so I think it is pretty intuitive so then you know just inside of our code we can access those variables as is now with the new for each workflow at least the way that it is showcased in that slide again that's you know very much subject to change and we can see how that changes it actually kind of separates out the data types from the variable name so that is something that is a little bit interesting so you know that's one thing that I'm, I'm really interested in to see you know how it works it's something that I really want to get my hands on just to see you know what this new workflow is like and if it is actually better than the existing entities dot for each okay number three is going to be enable bits enable bits is something that has been kind of you know circulating a little bit on the forums here and there for a little while and it is another thing that was kind of briefly hinted at in uh, Damien's presentation where he talked about the editor workflows and stuff at GDC um, on the last slide, he basically, you know, put up a bunch of the features that are coming to Dots 1.0, and one of those was enable bits. Now, enable bits is an interesting one because it's basically a way that we can say enable or disable a component. Now, this is going to be a really cool one because, you know, there are a lot of times in Unity ECS where we want to, you know, query for a specific set of entities and based off of their component types. Now, sometimes we have, you know, particular entities where, you know, under certain conditions, we want them to be included or excluded from that particular query. Now, a lot of times we may just add or remove a tag component, which is just an empty data component, just so it can be you know, part of that query or excluded from that query. However, in some circumstances, we may be doing this really frequently, which is going to lead to a lot of structural changes. Now, structural changes can be quite expensive because you know, we actually have to actually copy a bunch of data in memory from one location to another. And you know, if we're doing this very frequently on a large number of entities, it can end up getting quite costly. So enable bits sort of solves this problem because it's basically a flag that's a part of these components, or we can say a component is either enabled or disabled. And then using the entity query options, we can say, you know, whether we want to filter for enabled or disabled components. So then now our query would only query for things that have a particular component or tag or what have you, but it's also enabled. Now this is one of those things that we'll have to see, you know, how the performance compares to, you know, actually adding and removing a tag component. Um, because the, at least the way that I understand it, you know, it still has to kind of, you know, filter through all those entities and then check to see whether that component is enabled or disabled. So there may be a little bit of performance overhead with that, but, you know, definitely very excited for this one. Number four is a really cool one called aspects. Now, aspects is basically a way that we can group components together to kind of treat them as one. Now, a lot of times in Unity ECS, there are you know, many components that are all kind of related together, but we still wanna keep them separate. You know, for example, you can see this with the translation system where we have a translation component, a rotation component, and a scale component. And we do want these all to be you know, separate because a lot of times we may be just dealing with you know, one or the other, but there are some times where we're going to be frequently you know, accessing the translation and rotation together. So it would be nice to kind of you know, have a way to modify both these components without necessarily having to you know, query for both of them and all that. So as far as I understand with aspects is kind of a way to solve this where we can kind of you know, group these components together, treat them as one. So we can just say you know, they, this particular aspect was just go ahead and get the position and then it knows to basically go to the translation component and get the position. Now on the Unity Dots roadmap, they do mention that there are going to be a number of these built in and we're also gonna have the ability to create our own custom aspects for our own custom data components. So this is another one that I'm very excited for. And then number five is just gonna be kind of like a blanket editor and authoring workflows. This is something that um, you know, I'm definitely very excited for a lot of it and interested in a lot of other things. Now in Entities 0.50, we got a good number of these new editor windows and inspectors and debug tools, and they've been so awesome for developments in Unity ECS, but there's still definitely a few things here and there that would be you know nice to have like clicking entities in the scene view but I know that there are multiple teams working on improving these features and giving us better tools for developers so that is going to be something really really exciting now, the thing that I'm much more interested in to see how it works is the new authoring workflows you know we got a good deep dive during the GDC presentation again put on that by Damien that I've referenced a few times where he basically went over what they've been working on for the um, you know authoring workflows in dots 1.0 
Now, I expect a number of things have probably changed since that particular video, and they probably will change, you know, when we actually get our hands on them. But it was like super interesting to see how he kind of set up his Unity editor. So he had, you know, some things that were editable during the runtime and some things that were red editable during the authoring phase and just kind of figuring out, you know, how we can best develop games, you know, utilizing those on new workflows. It's gonna be really, really interesting. So I'm definitely very interested to get my hands on that one. So anyways, those are the top five features coming to DOS 1.0 that I'm really excited for, or at least just eager to get my hands on to see how they work and how they feel and how we can actually you know, use them to improve our development experience with DOTS and ECS. Anyways, I would love to hear from you. Let me know which features coming to DOTS 1.0 you are most excited for and looking forward to uh, down in the comment section below. Of course, if you do have any questions on this or you know suggestions for future videos, feel free to leave those down in the comment section below or join us over on Discord or over at tmg.dev slash Discord. Anyways, if you did enjoy today's video, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that like button. Also, feel free to subscribe to the channel for lots more videos about Unity's data-oriented technology stack and their entity component system. And with that, I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next one.